The next most simple class-based view is, well, it's our detail view. I'm actually gonna copy the article list view and just change it with detail view. And just like that, copy this, bring it into my URLs, come in here. I'm gonna keep these things in order. This is just personal preference. Okay. And then down in my URLs, I'm going to replace the detail just like that. And I'm going to change the keyword argument to PK. I've got my template here already. It's very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and go into that first article that I have. There it is. Not really that hard to do. It's actually very easy to do. So of course, if I didn't override the template, what would happen? I would get something like this. And if I change the keyword argument to back to ID, what would happen? I would get something like this. So you can absolutely have your own lookup if you want, but by default, it's looking for the keyword argument of PK or slug. So those correlate to different fields in the model. So PK is also known as the ID field. So ID actually equals to PK, but it stands for primary key. It's a little bit more advanced, um, but if we try to look up by slug, let's just change the URL to being slug, the keyword argument URL to slug, it's saying that it can't resolve this into our field. Well, these are our only options, active content ID and title. So let's go ahead and go back to ID and then override something in our view. This is the def get object method. This is built in to class-based views, especially with detail views. List views, it doesn't make sense, right? Because a detail view wants one thing, where a list view wants a list, a query set. So let's go ahead and get this by using a method we have seen before. So get object or 404. So all we're gonna do here is return get object or 404, the actual model name itself, and then we want the ID. Well, how do I actually get the ID from the URL? Like how do I get this keyword argument from the URL? It is quite a bit different than the view for it, right? The view for that detail view, it's passed into that general function. But on our class-based views, it doesn't work that way. So instead how it works is we can use self.keywordargs.get ID. So this is the actual keyword arguments that are being passed through that URL. You can see what they are by printing them out, but this is how we would actually override what that keyword argument is to our URL. And then we can look at our view and what do you know? It comes back and it works just fine. So it's very similar to what we've seen before but it's just slightly different. Now I understand that this probably feels a little bit more confusing than this. But the main thing here to understand is class-based views inherit from a lot of different pieces and to override its primary function is just get object. Detail view, the primary function of a detail view is to render a template from a specific object. Now, if I got rid of this query set here and refreshed, it would still work. I actually don't need that query set. What the query set does is it limits the choices available for that detail view. In other words, let's take a look at that. If I change this to being like filter ID is greater than one, don't worry if you don't understand what that is, but if the ID is greater than one and I change my URL back to that primary key, again, that's the default, we're overriding that default query set. Now, if I refresh in here, it gives me a page not found. And that's because the default query object is not inside of this query set. It does not exist in there. So that's something that's really cool too. And probably hopes that, or hopefully this makes you want to learn more about query sets. But either way, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that commented out, leave that object in, and leave the URL back as an ID because this is almost identical to what we've already done with our other views. Same with the name of the templates, except we just overrode them slightly.